A 17-year-old boy is facing charges in the hit-and-run death of a young mother in the Twin Cities. According to a criminal complaint, the driver panicked after he hit 22-year-old Teresa Wilson Snyder early Saturday morning in St. Paul. Police say the driver initially said he wasn't sure if who he hit, but later admitted that he did know it was a person. The boy said the person was walking on the road, but it was difficult to see her at night. The parents of a missing nine-year-old South Dakota girl say their daughter has a history of running away. Chad and Cassandra Denard say that their daughter Serenity would sometimes leave in the middle of the night. Their home in Sturgis, South Dakota, even has an alarm to help prevent that from happening. Serenity has been missing since running away from a children's home near Rapid City in February. Her father says he is 100% certain that Serenity planned the escape by having another child run away first, although she was not living with her parents when she ran away. Police say she wasn't dressed for the frigid weather and that it's unlikely she survived if she was outside. We're learning more about Special Counsel Robert Mueller's report on Russian interference in the 2016 election. The U.S. Attorney General released a summary yesterday that President Trump quickly claimed was vindication for him. Mullet Lenghi is on Capitol Hill. No collusion, no obstruction. A familiar message from President Trump as he left Mar-a-Lago on Sunday, but this time he was backed up by Attorney General William Barr, who had just released a four-page summary of Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. It was a complete and total exoneration. Barr wrote, the special counsel's investigation did not find the Trump campaign or anyone associated with it conspired or coordinated with Russia in its efforts to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election, despite multiple offers from Russian-affiliated individuals. But it did not totally exonerate the president, as he claims. Dealing with possible obstruction of justice charges, the special counsel stated that while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. Barr says he and Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, two Trump appointees, decided the evidence was not sufficient. His conclusions raise more questions than the answer. Democrats, like House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler, are calling on Barr to release the full report and testify before Congress. We cannot simply rely on what may be a hasty, partisan interpretation of the facts. The president's allies are ready to move on. This should end the debate once and for all, and America should come first. Barr says he intends to release as much of the special counsel's report as he can. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Over the 22-month investigation, Mueller's team brought charges against 34 individuals, including six advisors to the president. Raising money for a good cause always makes things sweeter. And that's exactly what it's going to be like tonight at Sanford's Sweet Miracles event tonight. And the Valley Today's Abby Furchner is live where it's all going to be taking place. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Jordan and Lisa. I'm here at the Courtyard by Marriott in Moorhead, and they're going to be hosting the 8th Annual Sweet Miracles event tonight at 6 o'clock. And I'm here with Aaron Spurley, who is the general manage here, manager here at the Marriott. And there is a lot that's going to be going on tonight. And one of them is an auction, and there's a lot of cool items. So right here, um, for all you <clears throat> Vikings fans out there, we have a Adam Thielen signed jersey, which is going to be on our live auction tonight. I think that's going to be a really hot item. It should be really fun. <laughs> and then we also have a uh, J.J. Watt signed Texans football helmet, which is also pretty special because I know he's pretty popular among the NFL fans. And then, of course, too, we also have a Carson Wentz hat. Football hat, which is just over there, but he signed the Super Bowl 42 football hat, which is pretty awesome. And then, of course, we have to talk about the sweet treats that are going to be yes. here because you'll have wine tasting to go along with that, too. Yes, so we have uh, glitter truffles over here and some red velvet layer cake. Um, for you to sample today. Oh, I'm so excited. But let's talk a little bit more about the treats. How do you guys come up with this idea? Because the chef here at the Marriott is the one who designs all of these sweet treats. Yeah, we just tell her, um, come up with something unique that's different every year. Um, this is her second time doing it. So um, just want her to have fun with it and something sweet, which is always fun. So, Oh, guys, well, I'm going to have to dive in here and... A little review here after the break of 
the truffles and that red velvet cake because who doesn't love red velvet for breakfast? <laughs> um, I breakfast can't imagine. the champions yeah. is what that is right there. <laughs> Good stuff. A sweet breakfast. We'll check in with you again soon. Thank you, Abby. It's now 638. The problem is a disgusting one, especially if you're not used to having dogs around and melting snow is revealing more of it. We have that story coming up on the Valley today. Plus, a nice dinner out turns into an emergency for more than 40 people. And up next, we are starting off our week on a really pleasant note. We'll let you know if this will last right after this.